All right, could we be waking up the echoes of the likes of Wayne Madkin and Kevin Prentice and Robert Bean and the likes of that 1998 championship team that uh, went to the SEC title game against Tennessee? Yes, we're thinking big, talking about Mississippi State football, but there's a lot of high hopes in Starkville coming into 2014 based on the last few games, 2013, and this core of players coming back this fall. We bring in Justin Sutton of For Whom the Cowbell Tolls. It's the SB Nation platform for Mississippi State Athletics. Hey, Justin. Hey, Mark. How you doing, bud? Been a while. Good to see you again. Yeah, it's good to see you again. Thanks so much for joining us again. And and, and this is a good uh, this is a good talk here because we're talking about a team that certainly a program that seems to be on the upswing, facing a lot of challenges in the SEC Western Division. Let's start at quarterback with Dak Prescott. All those great quarterbacks leave the conference from 2013. Dak Prescott is one of the old timers now. Suddenly, uh, <laughs> ten touchdowns, uh, passing, thirteen rushing last season. So. What do you think the development uh, points are for him this spring? Yeah, I think with Dak Prescott, which we're really going to look at through the spring and through the fall, which you want to see one chemistry with some of, some of his wide receivers. Uh, Malcolm Johnson is one guy I think that Mississippi State like to get more in the mix in the receiving game. Uh, see if Dak Prescott can get more of a chemistry with him would be a great, uh, it'd be a great security blanket. Uh, a name that's not in quite yet to Ryan Hutchison. He's going to be coming in. He's a JUCO transfer. He used to be a defensive lineman. Actually signed with Auburn on the defensive line a few years ago. Went to JUCO, became a tight end. I think he's got tons of sleeper potential. And so you're not seeing things from him yet. But I think for Dak Prescott, one of the things you want to see is continued development as a passer for Prescott. He seemed to have a knack for hitting big passes in big situations last year. But sometimes he wasn't always as accurate as you might want him to be. He might take a little bit to get going. Uh, secondly, his running style is pretty interesting. Mike Bonner with the Clarion Ledger had an article about working on Dak Prescott, getting his pad level better when he's running it, obviously to help prevent injury. You know, he missed some games uh, with a shoulder injury last year. I think that's one of the things Mississippi State wants to do. He carries the ball a lot. He takes a big pounding, much like Tim Tebow did when he was at Florida. And, I, and I'm not a big fan of the Dak Prescott-Tim Tebow comparisons. There haven't been many college football players as amazing as Tim Tebow. And Dak Prescott would obviously have a way to go to beat Tim Tebow. But... I think as much as he's going to carry the ball and run the ball, if you're Mississippi State, you do want him protecting himself running. So one of the things that they're looking at is maybe trying to refine that running style just a bit, keep his pad level a little bit better. So when he's taking those big hits, he's not absorbing such a blow. So if he can improve some as a passer, which he's doing pretty good for Mississippi State, and run a little bit safer, I think that's the development you want to see in Dak Prescott through the spring. Hey, Justin, uh, for those fans that uh, don't see a lot of Mississippi State football, the SEC gets uh, a ton of attention, but that goes elsewhere typically for the people watching from a national scene. Let's stay with the skill position players because we've got a good one in Jamie Ann Lewis with 64 Absolutely. receptions last year and five touchdowns. So so how good is he, really, for those people that have not seen Jamie Ann Lewis? Uh, Jamie Ann Lewis is fantastic. You know, he's not the biggest guy on the field. He's 5'9", a buck 83 when he's on the field, but uh, he, he's a fantastic player, just an all-around athlete, a guy that if he gets in space, he can do all kinds of things, and he knows how to make space. He's a multi, very talented athlete. He can do, he can, he can run the football, he can throw the football. Uh, on two different occasions, he threw, ran, and caught a touchdown pass in the same game. Uh, so he's a multi-purpose threat for the Bulldogs. He can also do things uh, as, as a return man if Mississippi State needs to use him that way, and uh, definitely one of the biggest threats the Bulldogs have offensively. Of all the wide receivers they have, and they've got guys with great physical skills, guys who, who look like they should be just complete threats, like a Joe Mario who's never quite turned the page yet as a wide receiver, who if he does, he's going to be almost unstoppable. Jamie on Lewis has become that wide receiver for Mississippi State who just gets the job done, gets the tough catches, and, and he's really become a bit of a security blanket for Dak Prescott. Fans who haven't seen him as much, he hasn't been quite a big as big of a name, but going and being a senior this year, I think you'll see – uh, more of him and hear from him, and, Mississippi, and fans of programs other than Mississippi State who catch him should enjoy watching him, as long as he's not doing some of those things to their team, I guess. Justin, it seems to be all right there for Josh Robinson to take over the running chores uh, and to be that number one guy, but at the same time, there are some other uh, guys that will compete in the backfield for some carries from uh, Josh Robinson. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I mean, obviously, he had a fantastic year for Mississippi State last year, uh, did a great job carrying the ball, and it, it, you know, he's in the shadow of Darius Perkins a bit, but he really, he really pushed Darius Perkins a lot uh, last year. Who, you know, probably looking at being a late round draft pick this year for Mississippi State. Uh, so you got to look at Josh Robinson as a guy who could be the man. Nick Griffin's battling back from a second ACL injury. Don't know how much he can contribute and how healthy he can stay. Unfortunately, it's been a big problem for him. A name that's in camp right now to keep an eye on, Ashton Schumper. I think you got to watch out for him. He is a big kid. He's going to be a sophomore. 
He played a bit as a freshman and ended up losing some of his eligibility uh, as a freshman. So I think if you're Mississippi State, you're going to miss him maybe having that year, but the Bulldogs decided they need to go ahead and like, get him going and get him playing in there. But uh, a, a name that's not in yet that I say keep an eye on when you're watching these uh, and trying to decide who's going to be who in, in the running back position, I think you definitely got to keep an eye on Aries Wilson. He's coming in from West Point, Mississippi. He's a freshman. He'll be in in the fall. Very talented player who should get some playing time this year as well. So I look in the biggest threat to Robinson being the man, I would say, would be Ashton Shumpert. And, and look for a guy who's not there yet, Aries Williams, to get some playing time this year at the running back position as well for Mississippi State. Gabe Jackson should have his name called very early in the NFL draft. Uh, Jamal Claiborne's a guy who very much impressed everyone as a freshman coming into mm -hmm. his sophomore season. Talk about Jamal Claiborne and, and his in, in a sense, taking over the spot as the most talented guy on the offensive front. Yeah, he's a very talented player, and still, I think what you would call raw, just a sophomore like you alluded to, uh, Jackson Academy, 6'4", 315 pounds. Uh, tons of potential for Jamal Claiborne. It'll be interesting to see what he does and accomplishes. Uh, a lot of folks like to kind of call him the next Gabe Jackson. That's pretty big pressure to put on somebody who's just a sophomore being the next Gabe Jackson, but... If he can live up to his, his what we saw of him, the glimpses we saw from his freshman year, I think Mississippi State could be good. And, and that's going to be one of the telltale things the Bulldogs had to develop this spring and, and into the fall and through the summer. They had to develop that offensive line. Uh, losing a guy like Gabe Jackson is obviously a big loss. He had a great year. And the Bulldogs are going to have to find some guys who can step up and, and make things happen there. And a lot of that pressure, I think, will fall on Jamal Claiborne and see if he can be the man there for Mississippi State. Okay, moving on to defense, for as great as 2013 ended, it started not so well. Right. Not just losing to Oklahoma State, not scoring a touchdown, and losing two prominent players uh, in Jay Hughes to strong safety and Justin Malone to injuries for the remainder of the season. Uh, their prognosis right now, are they in good shape and on the field for spring? Yeah, you get everybody back and you get them going, you start working them in, and that's the hard part. But the Bulldogs should be in pretty good shape uh, injury-wise. That's really with everybody coming in. Uh, to me, I think for Mississippi State, that secondary where you mentioned where Jay Hughes played, I think the secondary is going to be a lot of fun uh, to watch their development. You've got some guys like Jay Hughes in there, uh, the defensive back, Jamerson Love, who's going to be there, who should be back, and he dealt with a few injuries as well. Justin Cox, a player who really played out of position last year, uh, could move back to safety. Mississippi State is going to be really loaded on that defense and getting guys back that they missed. They had a lot of injuries back, and a lot of those guys are getting ready to go uh, this year. And some of them are taking it still slowly at practice, getting back into the rhythm of it. But they, they could have a tremendous defense coming back. This is a defense, like you alluded to, struggled some early. And the big thing I think this spring is going to be they'll have a whole other year now under Jeff Collins after almost losing. After you know, the talk was they're going to lose Jeff Collins in the offseason. Now they're going to get a whole other year in under him. And if these guys can come back healthy in the spring and stay healthy through the season, they get another year in that system, another year in that terminology. They were forcing turnovers everywhere towards the end of the season. This this could be a ball-hawking type defense. Like you saw at Mississippi State in the late 90s, 2000s under Joe Lee Dunn, which everybody was fired up actually you know, playing to the SEC championship uh, back in 1998 and, and was a threat in the West there for a few years. Yeah, staying with the defense, um, I think recruiting and National Signing Day has become so huge that some of these guys are stars even before they've ever done anything actually on the field. Chris Jones is a guy that actually outproduced Robert Kemdichie. I think we all know who Robert Kemdichie mm -hmm. is. College football fans nationwide know who Kemdichie is. Now, I'm not saying Chris Jones is better than Kemdichie, but he was right. more productive last season. If you go across and look at the big plays made by Chris Jones, your thoughts about Chris Jones, and, and I don't want to call him a breakout player because that makes him sound like he hasn't produced yet, but in terms of really breaking out as maybe a first or second team all-conference performer. Yeah, Chris Jones is one of those guys, you, you look at him, he's one of the ones Dan Mullins has gotten great at recruiting. Finding that guy who's going to be good before anybody else figures him out and roping him in. And I don't know how much he kept up with it in Mississippi, but the whole saga of Chris Jones getting to Mississippi State got outrageous. But apparently there was lots of back and forth. Maybe he's going to go to Ole Miss in the last week before he came to Starkville. And if you're a Mississippi State fan, you're glad Ole Miss doesn't have Chris Jones and Robert Kimdichie both playing on the defensive line. That would have been terrible for Mississippi State. But they get, they get Chris Jones. And a lot of folks still didn't know what to think about the guy. He hadn't played football very much in his career. He, he blew up his senior year. And he started going on the field, and he was a nightmare for quarterbacks. He's getting the backfield, sacking players, causing turnovers, and just wreaking havoc, playing in a couple different spots on the defensive line. 
and you would think the sky is the limit for him. He's only played a couple of years really working his trade of football. It's not like he's been a lifer for football. He's still learning the game, and he's getting by on physical ability right now. When the mental side of the game starts kicking in, and he's going to develop physically more. I mean, you're talking about a kid who's still a teenager. Now they're playing going up against 21-year-olds at times. The, the sky's the limit for, for Chris Jones and where he's going. If you're a Mississippi State fan, you definitely got to think he's going to be an all-SEC caliber football player. You know, barring the, all these caveats, if he stays healthy, all these kind of things. But no reason at all that you will see him continue to develop and, and be one of those first, second team all-SEC kind of guys at the end of this year, especially at the end of his junior year. Justin, this is a very simple question, but it's always my favorite because I always like to know the next level of guys that are ready to break out and get some playing time. Just from a personnel standpoint, mm -hmm. who are those guys that are on your radar, maybe not on the radar, but, but guys you're looking to see uh, fit into the mix uh, this fall? Absolutely. One name that some folks may not be familiar with quite as much to run you, Wilson, had a great freshman year for Mississippi State, a wide receiver, a guy who was a Mr. Basketball in Alabama. He's still kind of learning the whole football game. I would say look for him to be a complete uh, standout for the Bulldogs. But Nardrick McKinney, he's still under some folks' radars. He actually flirted a little bit with maybe going into the NFL draft as the linebacker, 6'5", 245-pound junior from a Rosa Ford High School in Tunica, Mississippi. Absolutely dominating type player. I, I would look for him to continue to have a big year. Uh, two more defensive players, Richie Brown and Beniquez Brown, both continue to develop a lot. Uh, Richie Brown, his senior year in high school, had over 200 tackles as a linebacker, so he knows how to read plays and get to the ball. I look for him to develop as well uh, defensively. Uh, one name that the Bulldogs, I think you're going to see them, I don't want to say part ways with, but see his career come to a close, which is a shame for Lando Bohanna. Uh, concussion injuries, he hasn't really done much in the spring, but wearing coaches' hats most of the time during the spring game. Uh, looks like maybe head injuries are going to go ahead and claim his career, which is a shame. He's a guy who had tons of talent. People were excited about this time last year, just could never stay healthy. Um, but offense, and that's some defensive guys. Offensively, though, I definitely look for Jeronia Wilson to be the breakout star in the wide receiving core. And then it'll be interesting to see which kind of freshman can step up and step in and produce as well. Off the top of the segment, of course, I laid down some names from 1998. That was the lone SEC uh, Western Division Championship for Mississippi State, uh, and of course, it's a little bit near and dear to my heart just because I covered the team. I was at the championship game, Cotton Bowl, the whole deal, and uh, let's not jump the gun. I was just having a little fun there and kind of <laughs> reminiscing to a certain extent. Not jumping the gun, especially in this division that's a nightmare, but at the same time, 17 starters back, there's got to be a really good feeling about what the possibilities are this fall. Oh, yeah, I think that feeling is there with the fans and the players. Uh, I've, I've got a podcast doing Ball Sports Radio uh, the Daily Grinder and my co-host and I, we were actually talking the other day. We found we try to find message board topics and just share our thoughts on it. And the question was, is this the year the Bulldogs finally win more than 10 games in the season? And for Mississippi State fans to be talking about 10-plus wins, you know they've got to be feeling pretty good because MSU fans, unfortunately, have been trained, I think, to sit back and wait for the sky to fall. And something bad's about to happen. But you look at the schedule and you look at who's coming back and who's left and when games fall in. There's a lot of potential here. Can Mississippi State win the West? I don't know. A lot of things would have to go right to make that happen. Can they be a team that gets to 10 wins? I think absolutely. You catch LSU game four of the season. This is a team that's, that does have a lot of losses. You wonder, just like they did last year, how many times can they keep absorbing all those losses before maybe if you're Mississippi State you catch them. Um, you got that game there. You, you, you got a game in Tuscaloosa. It's going to be tough. For the Bulldogs, I think there's five games you watch. And the key to having that big season where you get to 10 wins it's going to hinge on what happens these five games. Bulldogs have big matchups. They get Alabama. They go to Alabama. They go to Ole Miss. They go to LSU, and they host Auburn, and they host A&M at home. If the Bulldogs can win three of those five, I think ten wins is what Mississippi State is talking about at the end of the season. Now, they win, they don't win three of those fives. It may not happen. Obviously, you think A&M, Auburn, you got to win those at home, tough teams. And then you think the egg ball on the road, most likely of those other three, tough teams path to get it done, winning the egg ball on the road, but maybe Mississippi State does that. Or maybe you catch LSU soft. If Mississippi State starts off 4-0, and there's going to be a lot of excitement in the maroon and white fan base. I know that. All right, really good stuff. Justin Sutton writing, writing for the uh, for whom the Cowboy tolls there on the SB Nation platform for Mississippi State Athletics. Uh, the spring game coming up this Saturday, uh, actually next Saturday, right, uh, Justin? That'll be April right. 12th. Still called the maroon and white game? Uh, yeah, sometimes, yeah, that's what most people call it. Of course, you know, most football fans now just call things a spring game, even though everybody has one. 
Uh, but the Maroon and White game should be a lot of fun. It's part of Super Bulldog weekend. The Ole Miss in town for a baseball series. Of course, baseball right now dominating a lot of Mississippi State fans now that the team's playing well again after a tough uh, out-of-conference slate where they didn't do so hot. But, yeah, it should be a really fun weekend and a, and a great chance to go really wonder how much you ever learned about your team watching that first scrimmage. All right, Justin, thank you so much for the rundown. We appreciate your time. Hey, Mark, anytime. Glad to join you, bud.